Good morning, dear friends. It is so nice to be with you. And let us together spend a few minutes in the presence of God at the feet of Jesus, listening to him and learning what he wants to teach us. Today's meditation is centered around the first miracle Jesus ever performed, and that happens to be at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. One day, soon after Jesus began his public ministry, there was a wedding in one of the houses in this city. And uh, Jesus and his disciples also were invited. And it seems that the uh, household where the wedding was happening happened to be a friends of uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Right in the middle of uh, the feast, suddenly the wine, which was very, very important in those days at any feast, ran out and it's finished. And uh, it brought great embarrassment and shame to the family because for this vital part of any feast to finish right in the middle of the feast was a great shame. And uh, Mary, being the inner circle of friends of the family, came to know it and she came to her son Jesus and requested his intervention in this and to help the family. And uh, Jesus told her, Mother, why are you involving me in this? But then Mary somehow felt that her son would not ignore uh, this great need of this family. And so she went and told the servants, whatever my son Jesus would ask you to do, just do it. The rest of the story is history. Here Jesus did the first of all his miracles and the Bible says his disciples believed and put their trust in him after seeing the miracle. And uh, <clears throat> let us learn some very valuable lessons uh, from this miracle. Jesus taught many things by using parables. And when I study the miracles of Jesus, I also found that uh, each miracle also is a parable through which we can learn some very valuable spiritual lesson. The first lesson that we can learn from this miracle is uh, Jesus gives us always uh, the most precious thing free. And these precious things that come from God freely given, not because they are cheap and he does not throw his blessings carelessly to people who do not care. They are freely given because if you try to buy, you will not buy even a portion of uh, the, his blessing. <clears throat> now this wine that came from Jesus, which nobody knew, except the servant um, was very precious on account of two things number one the time was such that uh, they could not produce that quality wine immediately it would take several months and sometimes even over a year in order to produce such excellent wine but for this, they do not have, they didn't have any time. And that makes a sudden appearance of this wine very, very precious. And how did it come? Not at a price, but freely. Simply because Jesus Christ happened to be there. And uh, the second thing that made this wine very precious was the wine also was a peculiarly of a fine, higher quality. Because by the order of Jesus, the servants took the water from the uh, water jars and they gave it to the master of ceremony. He tasted the wine and discovered that this was the best wine he has ever tasted in his life. 
And so he called the bridegroom and scolded him a little bit. What is this? Everyone serves the best wine to start with. And uh, the second quality wine is brought when everybody is uh, drunk and satisfied. And then in case if anybody wanted, then the second quality. But you kept the best quality hidden and brought the second quality. And now you are bringing this best wine. Because he did not know from where this wine has come. And uh, everyone brings out the best in the beginning. And uh, the, 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 the point that the master of ceremony was making, but why did you kept this best wine apart and brought the second quality in the, to begin with and now you are bringing it out? And it is because uh, he did not know from where this wine has come. Only the servants knew. This was the only miracle Jesus did without using any kind of means. Usually when he performed a miracle, he either touched the patient or anything else, or he uh, sent a, a command, used words, and he spoke, and uh, be thou clean, or uh, stretch out your hand, or stand up and walk, some words he used. But we don't see him using any words or touching the jars or water or giving a command to the water, nothing. And he simply said, after the servants obeyed and filled the jars to its brim with water, he simply told the servants, now take the water and give it to the master of ceremony. Then they obeyed his command and took the water to the MC. The water, how did the miracle happen? When did the miracle happen? We can only imagine or guess. You know, the water is a creation of God. And who was standing there? The creator himself. And I believe that the water, the creation, recognized the creator who's standing right in front of it and that water also listened and heard a silent command proceeding from Jesus' mouth. What could have been that command? Be turned into wine. And the water obeyed. And what a wonderful miracle to us. And um, he is the Lord of all creation. Follow him and the best is kept for everyone for the last time. You shall reign and judge throughout eternity. That is what Jesus Christ has kept for you. And the Bible says if you suffer with him, you will also reign with him. So in the beginning of our Christian life, it may not be an easy task or an easy thing. There are persecutions, there are oppositions, there, are, there will be ridicule and rejection. And many of you who are listening to me may have gone through some of these problems. But do not be discouraged or disheartened. The best is still kept for you. These afflictions are momentary compared to eternity. And one of these days, Jesus will come and take, we will take the church to himself and everything is over. Your afflictions, your trials, your persecution, your pain, your sicknesses, every, your difficulties, everything is over. Once Jesus comes and you are in glory and you will reign with Jesus. And so be cheerful and be encouraged and be strengthened. The second lesson we can learn from this is, um, he makes a glorious thing out of common thing. Water is a very common and easily available. Nothing extraordinary. And out of that water came forth the best wine that those people ever tasted. 
out of the ordinary you remember the road of moses when god was calling moses and sending him on a mission back to egypt moses was he removed the shoes and he was kneeling down and still he had the shepherd's rod in his hand and moses was using all kinds of excuses why he cannot he could not go and at the end moses i mean god asked moses what is in your hand moses said it is a shepherd's rod is a dry lifeless a very common a thing and god said why don't you drop it and moses dropped it and then god commanded him pick it up by it and suddenly the rod became a snake a living snake and moses first reaction was to run away from it a living snake is a problem and perhaps you are facing a snake in your own life a snake is dangerous and you may be facing something very dangerous am i speaking to someone a young person or a, or a parent or someone if you are listening to this listen to this what god was asking moses when he asked him to drop it he was actually asking moses so far you have been calling this road is mine this moses why don't you disown it why don't you disown it and that's what happened he dropped it and then god said to pick it up when it became a snake by its tail when moses was trying to run away from it and he came back and he picked it up by its tail and it became the same road again between that you know dropping it and picking it up a big transaction has happened you know what the ownership of that road was transferred from moses to god a very common thing and what a miraculous wonders and signs happened in the land of egypt by the use of that road you know you read that passage the road was never again uh, uh, spoken of as moses road it was always god's road moses carried till then but from then on moses was carrying god's road in his hand the rod in his hand became a object a, 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 a means of a miraculous works in the land of egypt what a mighty with that even during the wilderness journey with that rock he brought water out of rocks my friends very common you may think you are less than a common person but place yourself in the hand of god and let god owns you you tell god lord i surrender anything common but god can make something very precious out of that common and uh, my friends this is what god is able to the third lesson we can learn from this is god gives according to his own time not according to our ideas remember lazarus martha and mary Ma- lazarus became very sick and what was martha and mary's idea send a word to jesus he will come running and he will perform the miracle of healing that was their idea but jesus did not do the miracle there according to their idea he stayed on where he was he heard the news he never responded to the news and the sisters watched their brother dying and the brother died and they conducted the funeral and by the time jesus arrived he was in the grave for four days and when they saw jesus jesus we don't understand why didn't you come when we send the word if you had been here our brother would have been alive even now my friends let us understand this god has his way and his timing and his timing is the perfect timing he was 4 days late but is in that wonderful that even though he was 4 days late his timing was the right timing 
And you know the miracles that happened, not merely healing, which was common by then. But he performed one of the greatest miracles of bringing Lazarus out of that grave when his body was already stinking and decaying. He came back alive. When you allow God to do his work according to his timing, you will never be disappointed. What is the most precious thing of life? Everything very precious, freely given. Your life, anything more precious than your life? Who gave you this life? It is God Almighty. The salvation, but that guarantees eternal life for you. Have you paid anything for that? No. The most precious thing, eternal life and all its privileges. And then look at the common life, everyday life, the air with the oxygen, the most precious thing that sustain your life. Do you pay for that? If God were to serve a bill every day for the oxygen that keeps kept you alive, how much you will be able to pay? Very precious, but freely made available to you. Air and oxygen to sustain life rain and sunshine to sustain life and many things we take them all for granted my friends do we at least give thanks to god each day for these precious things and i encourage you think of these things you are worrying a lot of things uh, worrying about things you don't have you don't have a car like your neighbor has. You don't have a house like your neighbor has. And you look at uh, things that others have and which you don't have. And you feel sorry for, for yourself. And then you feel jealous of those who possess them. Come on, my friends. You have a lot more to thank God each day. Very precious things are given to you freely without even one single rupee. Are you grateful to God? Are you thankful to God for your life? and for the for the air that you breathe for the water you drink for the uh, for the sunshine all these things are necessary for sustaining your life and how much money you pay nothing thank god this is a lesson that we learned from this miracle father this morning we thank you for teaching us this wonderful valuable lesson from this first miracle you performed lord forgive us for being so ungrateful, for taking things for granted. Help us, O oh God, for each day that we will give thanks and praises to you and uh, submit ourselves totally to you. For you, who have provided all these things without money, you will take care of us even today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a wonderful day, and I want you to enjoy this day. And have a good day. Amen.